Hi, this is Carlton Mills from London, England, and I would like to share with you my thoughts in a series of studies on the subject of eschatology, primarily from the books of Daniel and Revelation. This is not a chapter-by-chapter study, but rather a general overview identifying the highlights. This 23rd study is entitled, Seeing Signs, Reality. I first shared this message in November 2021. Now in February 2024, I have made a few minor changes due to the passage of time and further reflection. Our text is Mark chapter 13, verses 28 to 31. It reads, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye, in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So reads God's holy word. This study has proven to be the longest in the series, so I thought it prudent to do it in two parts. Having looked at the analogies of the signs of the times, I want us to now look at the reality of the signs as they unfold before our very eyes. I think it's worth restating my definition of a sign. A sign is a physical, tangible, literal event witnessed with the natural eye, but comprehended with the spiritual eye of faith. The prophet was often called to foretell sign events. I want to suggest that the signs do not include wars, rumours of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes and the likes, because these shall ebb and flow as the Lord sees fit to send them, having existed since the days of the apostles as what the Lord called sorrows or birth pangs, giving us a pregnancy analogy. As such, that the baby kicks in the womb does not mean it is coming to birth. Now, halfway in the third trimester in 2020, we had the COVID pandemic. In 2021, we saw floods, fires and volcanic activity. 2022 saw the war in Ukraine and 2023 conflicts between Israel and Hamas. 2024 has seen further destructive activities and doubtless these shall continue to the very end. Yet, barring war, however these disasters of nature come upon us, I believe, rather than look at the sorrows that are inflicted upon humanity, I believe we are to look at the polytrix. For, as the Lord taught to watch for the development of the siege of Jerusalem, requiring his people to act, so I believe there are a number of distinct signs that we can identify to the second advent of the Lord Jesus and the end of the world. Some of the signs are historical, and some are future, relative to our moment in the prophetic timeline, as events have moved so far from the first century to the present 21st century which may well be the last century. So we say, Come, Lord Jesus, come, Maranatha. Indeed, as I share this message in 2024, I believe it is a year of critical sign in which we shall see when we get a little bit further in this study. Before we start, however, I must mention one special sign. This sign doesn't really fit within the Polytrix framework of events, because it is spiritual in nature, and so I call it the Gospel Star. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, Jesus said, And this Gospel of the Kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. In this respect, as we move through the signs, I shall tag the Gospel Star where I think it best fits within the timeline of events, as it moves from 0% to 100% progression among the nations in fulfilment of the Great Commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel, as Jesus says, and then shall the end come. Then we shall hear the midnight cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The measure I am using is the work of providing complete Bible translations into the world's languages, designated as milestones by those involved in this great work. Now in the 21st century, within our global village, 
There really is no country that has not been touched by the gospel. However, as the gospel progresses, there is the need to have the Bible in the mother tongue. And this shall continue till we reach 100% completion in providing God's word to all the people groups, mother tongue, of the purported 7,000 plus living languages in the world. So briefly then, concomitant to Daniel's vision of the prophetic 70 weeks, following the incarnation, life, death, resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ that completes 69 of Daniel's 70 weeks, all the remaining signs are fulfilled in the last prophetic week. Sign 1 is the day of Pentecost, in fulfilment of the prophecy of Joel. It is also here that we first tag the gospel star with 0% progress as the clock starts ticking and the gospel star begins its journey across the globe. Sign 2, in fulfilment of Daniel's vision and the words of the Lord in the Olivet Discourse, is the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD as the Jewish Great Tribulation which, as we know, is also a precursor to the end of the world and its great tribulation. Sign 3, as per Revelation 17, is the death of Beasthead 6, commonly referred to by historians as the fall of Western Rome, dated in the 5th century, 476 AD. We have to wait for well over 1,000 years into the 18th century to see Sign 4, also as per Revelation 17, in the rise of Great Britain as Beasthead 7, during the reign of Queen Anne in 1702 to 1714. Signs 5a to d brings us into the 19th century to the words of Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the falling away that shall pave the way for the revelation of the son of perdition to the world. Having previously only mentioned the lies of evolution as the sign of the falling away, I want to suggest that the apostasy has also taken the form of religious and moral decline. Image A. In these we can identify as damnable heresies seen in the false Christs, false apostles and false prophets, and yet future the real though satanic miracles that if it were possible would deceive the very elect. Christian cults, starting with the publication of the Book of Mormon in 1830. The Catholic Church is also a Christian cult, but it has a totally different role to play within God's divine drama. Image B, concurrent with the new Christian cults, was the German higher criticism in which men took it upon themselves to question the authority of Holy Scripture in what is called higher criticism. True belief in Holy Scripture accepts unequivocally the verbal and written inspiration of the entire Old and New Testaments, whilst endeavouring to correctly understand their meaning, and, recognising that we cannot fully grasp every jot and tittle of its profound writings, this side of eternity. Image C, as mentioned in an earlier study, is the moral decline in the year 1859, with the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species or, as originally published, on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favoured races in the struggle for life. And, of course, it doesn't take a genius to know who he considered to be the favoured races. The moral decline has continued into the 21st century in same-sex marriage, transgender rights, infanticide, in the womb, the list goes on and on. Image D brings us back to the religious decline. These we can identify as heresies, though not as evil as cults in which we also saw the emergence of unsound doctrines, as for example the Seventh-day Adventists, birthed through the study of eschatology, which leans heavily on the teachings of Ellen G. White, and so do not adhere to sola scriptura. Also, as the result of study in eschatology, is the teaching of dispensationalism, with its confused ideas about Israel, the Church, the Rapture and the Return of Christ. Continuing into the 20th century, there followed the charismatic signs and wonders movement, the prosperity gospel, new evangelicalism and others. 
the practical outworking of these unsound doctrines is that true Christians that believe such doctrines, though they will not lose their salvation, are building their faith on wood, hay and stubble, and not the good of gold, silver and precious stones, thereby blighting their eternal rewards. O oh, Father, give us discernment to distinguish between the true and the false. However, with its apostles, prophets and so-called miracles, it's possible that Antichrist will emerge from this category, because he won't be a Jehovah's Witness or Mormon. Rather, I see him being schooled in the charismatic Pentecostal evangelical circles as he performs real, though satanic, miracles that will deceive many. Sign 6, which in an earlier study I referred to as a birth, I think is better seen as the trimester periods in the analogy of birth pangs of Beastead 8 America. Chronologically, the first trimester is before the falling away of sign 5. However, like a pregnancy, there is very little sign of the woman being pregnant. Likewise, who would have thought that America would become the beastly creature that it was prophesied of over some 2,000 years or so before its time when it was conceived in 1776 with only 13 colonies that made up the nation? Therefore, for practical reasons, it is better placed as sign 6 following the falling away. Noting the gradual degeneration from Rome to Great Britain to America, we see that Great Britain manifested gross inhumanity, far greater than Rome, as for example in the transatlantic African slave trade, especially so because it committed such crimes whilst calling itself a Christian nation. Whilst America, also a so-called Christian nation, is worse than both Rome and Britain in perpetrating Britain's crimes and ultimately shall give birth to Antichrist. As events move on, we come to America's second trimester, seen in its violent birth pangs as it fought out the civil war between 1861 and 1865. By then, the fetal nation had grown to 22 states since the revolution of 1776. Coming into the 20th century and the First and Second World Wars bring us to 1944 and the fatal wound of Head 7 Great Britain and America's third trimester, as the beast's aberrant eighth head, with 48 states, now occupying the landmass of North America. Repudiating the crown of monarchy, America has instead opted to adopt the early ancient Greek and Roman systems of government, which they call democracy. It seems to me that the irony of America is that it shall ultimately replicate the ancient nations of Greece and Rome so admired by the founding fathers in anointing a king. To compound the irony of America and its boast of so-called democracy is that it has failed to understand the human psychology of the need for a king. For built into our DNA is the knowledge that God is sovereign and he has highly exalted Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We even see that in the eternal city, the kings of the earth bring their glory and honour into it, with no president or prime minister in sight. The facts of biblical and secular history shows that a nation doesn't come of age, so to speak, until it has a sole king, having overcome all other contenders within its realm. And so, as America is a Johnny-come-lately nation, if it is to reach its fullness as a nation, the people will cry, Give us a king! That king shall be the final potus, though he shall be its first and last. Sign 7a is the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, which seems certainly in accordance to prophecy, as, for example, the words of Zechariah, chapters 12-14. to 14. Image B is the Jews return into Israel, termed Aliyah. Aliyah shall continue till the number of returnees have reached the point ordained by the Lord. Indeed, in October 2021, some 1,000 souls from Beni Menashe entered the land of their forefathers. Image C shows Israel further established in 2018 when Beasthead 8 America moved its embassy to Jerusalem thereby reinforcing the legitimacy of the State of Israel. 
whilst image D is yet another step toward Israel's prophetic blessings with the 2020 Abraham Accord. Here we come to the second point in time with the Gospel Star. At this point, the complete Bible has reached 80% of the world's languages as the light of the Gospel makes its progress across the world. From this point in the 21st century, as of 2024, we see that it has taken some 2,000 years to reach the near halfway point in the unfolding of the prophetic sign to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, I find it difficult to see that it would take another 2,000 years to complete the remaining nine signs before the final eternal sign 16. Similarly, respecting the sign of the gospel star and with the aid of technology, Shall it really take another 2,000 years to provide the final 20% of Bible translations into the mother tongues of the world's languages? And so without being dogmatic, it looks to me that the end of this present age and the new Jerusalem is nigh, even within the 21st century. At this point, I will close with a musical interlude played by a brother who wishes to remain anonymous to give you time to look at the chart before we continue part two in a second video and the things that are yet to happen. Thanks for listening. God willing, I shall have another message for you next time. God bless you.